Right, joining us now is one of our county's most successful combat sport athletes, former world super welterweight kickboxing champion, Gary Briggs. Just let's take us back to the beginning. How did you get into the sport? Uh, we got, well, I got into it for an advert in the paper, really. I was going back oh, um, when I was about 25. I got into sport late. I mean, I've always liked boxing and stuff like that, but as me and my brother, we, uh, we saw an advert in the paper and um, I said full contact karate, I thought we'd we'll have a go with that and have a, have a go. And we went along to, to do it and that's how it started really and that was ended up being like kickboxing. And you started off with full contact karate, how did well, you find the, the transition? Well, I, I did a bit of karate and like taekwondo stuff, just, just like messing around when I was younger, nothing serious, but then obviously when I got into the kickboxing I realised what it was and and just sort of got the bug really and went from there and that's just how it went. When you say you realised what it was, for us who don't know anything about it, what is it? Well, well basically everyone knows what it is now as who's involved with the sport, but in the, in, in the earlier days obviously the, 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 the story was, was a load of sailors went over to Thailand and, and challenged these Thai, boys, Thai guys and uh, basically um, that, was, that, was ta that was called Thai boxing then. And then obviously the Americans got hold of it and um, sort of watered it down a bit, cut away the knees, and then used the legs, and they call it full contact kickboxing. And that is the almost the essence of of kickboxing, isn't it? There's so many different rule formats. <coughs> yeah, it's so leg many kicks. Types. Um, and obviously with the tie boxing, you you got your, your throws, knees, elbows, different sport altogether. Um, t and you got your kickboxing low kicks, and you got um, kicks above the waist. And you were kicks above the waist, is that right? To start with, I was low kicks, but then I, I liked, I didn't, I couldn't walk very much after fights, so I decided to <laughs> go go away for the kicks above the waist, and that even suited me better. I think that's probably the safest <laughs> option, isn't it? But did did you find it difficult to pick up when you were doing it? Um, I, I, I did, but I, I enjoyed it, and, and that's something I like to do, and and I just went into it really uh, as just a. Just, just a hobby, really, and I, I didn't, you know, once once I had my first fight, I got the bug. I lost my first fight, but I was well over match against someone who was like had quite a few fights, so I found out afterwards. But it didn't put me off like it would with most people. That's, I'd worked on stuff which I needed to, and went from there, and I won my second fight, and I knocked out, and just got the bug for it, and then went on from there. And so how do you develop your career from there? What's Is there some sort of definite and defined structure? Um, well, I didn't go into it as a career, I just went into it as a hobby, mm. and then Basically, for five years, uh, I was doing amateur fights, three rounds. Going, you know, we were, I was getting picked up from work at 5:30. We were going all the way to Barnsley and doing a show. I was, get, I, I sat in the dressing room one day. I was at one o'clock in the morning. I was the last on the bill on a, on a Holland and England uh, match, which they chose me to represent England. I was the last fighter on, and I was sitting there thinking, "What am I doing this for?" <laughs> at one o'clock in the morning, uh, and basically um, sitting there thinking, "I'm going to be fighting the ex-European kickboxing champion here." And I thought, "Well, um, you know, you just got to believe in yourself." You yeah, know, that's right. Basically, and yeah, you know, I lost the fight on points, but I did well and took a lot of sort yeah. of from that. And you say you got into it originally as a hobby, but then things got a little bit more serious. 1997. Yeah. You picked up the WKO World Super Welterweight yeah. title. Yeah, but I was sort of retired uh, two years before that because basically I um, come back. Uh, yeah, it was <laughs> basically what, what it was. I, I got I went for a European title in Poland, and that was on live TV there. And uh, and I was doing well in the fight, and that was the sixth round. I got caught with a, a round of kicker in the back of the head, and basically stumbled. And the referee sort of started counting me, and and, I, and then he counted me out, and I just said, "Well, I'm okay," but I wasn't. The legs were telling me different stories mm. and I had a big lump come on the back of my head so that, that's I thought to myself well, I'd done well in this I won a British title before I've gone for a European title didn't think I was going to get any further so I decided to call it a day and I thought I'll just go into coaching and basically then the call came about a year later I was still in the ratings of the WKO and um, they said that you know the guy who actually won that world title on the same show as when I w went for the European title he beat the American. He still had the title, so that's basically I was. If I, we could make it happen, mm -hmm. I could then get them uh, get it here in Norwich. And you won Which it you at, at the Sports Village yeah. in front of a home crowd. Yeah, it was great. What was the feeling? I oh, mean, it was brilliant. That was such a buzz. You know, just going back on. I got a lot of highs in my career, and looking back at that was there was nothing like it really. Um, you know, just to just to be you know just get in the ring at any level. It is, takes gives respect to anyone. Don't matter, you know, whether you're just a three round club fighter or someone. I always tell people that I was never a talented mm -hmm. fighter, and they said, "Well, I come that you've been world champion." I said, "Yeah, but that's determination." I was going to say, and, you, and, you and hard work, work and, and, and getting the breaks and, and believing in yourself. Now, Gary, uh, last we spoke, 
you were just telling us about how you had won the world championship, but it wasn't yeah. that straightforward, was it? No, well, basically, uh, the, when I, I'd seen this guy fight in Poland, when I fought for the European title, he beat the American, so I knew he was quite an aggressive fighter and he was a come-forward fighter, so I knew what to expect. And um, basically, he weighed in a little bit over the weight, so we had to like trim a bit of weight off. I came in like two kilo under, so I was uh, less of weight than him anyway. On the night of the fight, he was even bigger. I mean, he had dried, obviously, they'd done it better. They dried, he dried him, got, his, got the weight back on, and then basically... Um, he came at me like a steam train, which I expected. Then, you know, the first sort of round, everyone was quiet and he wasn't worried. And I thought, well, I'll be all right because he didn't get a last of pace of doing this. And every, as the fight went on, as the round went on, I, I caught him a few times. And he, then he, in the second round started, he'd done the same thing again. And then I put him down three times and it cut him on the eye. And so I sort of knew I, I'd had him then, but then he started doing the foul and then like, catching me low, kicking me, and, and, the and then he threw me on the floor, got me in a headlock and threw me on the floor. I thought, well, well this isn't rugby or, you know, judo. And uh, so he got points taken off. And then, sort of, to cut a long story short, coming to the sixth round, he, I caught him with a spinning back fist and he got hold of me and threw me on the floor again and I dislocated the shoulder. But basically, they called the fight, they disqualified him. So basically, yeah, that was the greatest night in my life in the ring to win the world title, but to win it like that, I didn't want to, I wanted to do it, like stop him, because yeah. I was in the verge of doing that anyway. But and whilst that might have been a bit of a flat feeling, you yeah. then went on to defend it four times. Oh, yeah, yeah, that, then obviously better nights came on after, but even though that was the best night, because you actually won it, but then defending it was even harder, because everyone wants it, doesn't they? Yeah. Exactly, you're at the top of the tree. Yeah. You've gone into coaching now, though, haven't yeah. you? What took you down the coaching route, and who are you actually coaching? Well, basically... Um, the, the kickboxing, I, I took, after I'd finished um, fighting, I, I, I coached for a little while and I, I was still putting local shows on, but I was just find, I find it hard to get the, the sponsors to do it after I had the main fight, which was my fight, which got the Evening News sponsored and, you know, the Sports Village sponsored the event as well, so that was a big help in the cost of it. And obviously we had to have people come through the doors to, to make it work. So I, I, I after like doing it for a while, I, I, I then, you know, I sort of took a break from it for a while and I went back into it and um, then sort of built my own gym at the back of my house and started coaching people like that but I was doing I was started going to more of the, the white collar boxing which was coaching the lads doing that and, and basically white collar wasn't around then and that was uh, you know that was just not, that wasn't heard of uh, but the good the opportunity for white collar fighters is that the people even like the age of 40s in the 40s could, you can come in and do it and have a go. as long as they were fit enough to train then you, I could coach him, or anyone could coach him. They can get in the ring and realize their dream, get in there and have a fight, and that's a, your bucket list tick on you ticked off. You know, it's that fantastic. So that's why I think uh, I can't uh, knock that really. No, <laughs> it's, it's, it's that moment, isn't it? That so yeah. many people dream of to have a go, get in the ring, and yeah. just experience that. Maybe it's just for the one time. But Gary, thank you so much for coming in. Right. An absolute pleasure to interview, and best of luck in yeah. the future. My pleasure.